Hi, I'm Ken Pinto, author of the book, How Much is the Milk? The only supply chain management book written specifically for residential construction. Or at least I'm pretty sure it's the only one. And this YouTube channel has been created in response to you. Questions and comments from readers and folks I run across in social media and industry events. Seems a lot of you have the same questions. <clears throat> now I know a lot about construction. I know a lot about supply chain management. I don't know anything about your company. <clears throat> so best I can do is share my uh, knowledge, skills, and experiences with you and let you decide how to use the information. The value of this, this channel will be significantly improved with your participation. So use the comment section below. To put in your questions, comments, concerns, or just a suggestion on another video that you'd like to see done. Uh, like and subscribe so that you get notified when uh, new videos come out. You know, we have a lot to talk about. So let's get started with our next video. Hey, welcome to our next episode on concrete and cement. You probably have noticed the prices have ticked up a little bit and they've been steady for a long time and now there's a change. So what's driving that change? So we're gonna take a few minutes to talk about that. Before we do, I just wanna make sure that we have a clear definition of terms on cement and concrete. Now there's no one in our industry who should mix those two terms up, but it happens. It happens more than I'd like to admit. So I'm gonna make this really simple. This is how you can teach your folks. <clears throat> cement is to concrete as all purpose flour is to cake. Easy enough, right? We do not walk on cement. Uh, that would be a gray powdery substance that would completely cover our shoes and the lower part of our legs and make us look like pig pen walking down the street. We walk on concrete. One time I was in a, in a construction training course and during the concrete portion of that course, uh, the instructors really wanted to drive this point home. <clears throat> and so they said that for anyone who confuses the terms cement or concrete, you will have to carry around with you a 94 pound bag of cement. And you'll carry it to and from your classes and to and from the dorms, uh, to and from the, you know, the training course. And uh, that 94 pound bag of cement gets pretty heavy. <clears throat> now, I certainly did not mix up the two terms. I know the difference between cement and concrete, but a couple of people in my class did. And I probably enjoyed it a little bit too much watching them carry around. The, that bag of cement gets heavy pretty fast. I mean, once you start carrying that around a little for a while and from class to class, oh, it gets pretty heavy. I don't, I, I'm not in touch with those guys to this day, but I'll bet you they sure know the difference between cement and concrete. So maybe you want to try that at your office. <laughs> Let me know how that goes. All right, so <clears throat> there are a couple things driving a cost change in uh, concrete. And so let's take a look at a few of them. First, let's take a look at cement. So here are a couple of graphs. And it, one graph is showing uh, from 2004 to 2021. And yeah, it's been a slow and steady increase, but uh, you know, nothing drastic. And if you look at the last 18 months or 20 months or so, uh, you can see that it is starting to uptick a little bit. So the, there's two pieces of information in this graph. One is from the producer price index or the PPI. And it shows it ticking up a little bit more than ENR, engineering news record. These are two sources of information, my two favorite sources of information for the change in concrete pricing. Now, neither of these are a price, they're an index. <clears throat> the producer price index um, uh, starts with the baseline of 100, I think in 1982. And ENR, uh, I think it might also be uh, 1982 as the baseline. So what these, these indexes show uh, most prevalently is a change, right? A change in pricing. It doesn't necessarily tell you what, what the price is. Um, so now let's take a look at ready mix. So ready mix the graphs look very similar to the cement graphs. So over the past, you know, the 17, 18 years, there's been a slow and steady increase. In the last 18 months, yeah, we're starting to see a little, start to tick up just a little bit. So uh, we've been lucky to have this, you know, the um, stability of, an, of, a, of a commodity 
and in time when everything else is increasing in price, that we've not seen a whole lot of increases here. <clears throat> now, cement is a global product, a global commodity. So things that happen around the world affect the price of cement here in the United States. <clears throat> so we have to, to deal with that. And I've been watching, you know, and reading the earnings calls from some of the public uh, manufacturers of cement, and they're starting to hurt a little bit. So some of them are not making much money at all in cement. Some are actually losing money on their cement business. So prices have to go up. So we're seeing like we're about a 7% increase in cement prices. Uh, aggregates are also going up in price. Aggregates, also called rocks, uh, are uh, a little expensive to get out of the ground. So the energy it takes to pull it out of the ground and then the transportation cost to move it on a train or a truck, that adds up. And you know, you know what you know, fuel prices have done lately. <clears throat> the last element of a concrete mix that I want to chat about today is sand. Now this is interesting. Take a look at this graph. So in 1996, a ton of cement, sand weighed, or it's weighed, a ton of sand cost about four dollars a ton. And in that 2021, last year, was about ten dollars a ton. Right now, it's in the middle of uh, 2022, it's 40 to 45 dollars a ton. Whoa! What a difference! So if we're not changing too much over the past 20 years, now in the past year it's made a big difference. And you think, what in the world is driving the cost of, of sand up so much? Well, it's not us. It's not the construction industry. It's another industry altogether who uses the same sand that we do. Whether it's called masonry sand or concrete sand, is the same sand used by the fracking industry. So a wonderful thing that we now have access to oil in the ground or shale oil in the ground that we've never had access to before um, the fracking methods and technologies. It's cool, there, you know, there's a patch of land in West Texas that can supply all the oil the United States needs for the next 200 years. In the past, we have never had access to that because we didn't have the technology or the methods to be able to get it up out of the ground. Now with fracking, we do. So what a wonderful thing. But they use a lot of sand and they use the same sand we do. And they typically pay more for sand than we do. So up goes the price and we want, if we want our sand, cause there's a finite amount of sand available. Wait a minute, did I just say a finite, a finite amount of, isn't the whole earth made of sand? Well, yeah, it is. But getting it out of the sand and processing it to, to meet the requirements of masonry sand or concrete sand takes a few things. One of which is a permit to open a new quarry. And those permits do not come easily. And then you, you request a permit, the environmentalists uh, are, are up in arms, crazy about you destroying the earth. So um, there's a finite amount of sand available to us. And so the, the supply and demand is going to drive the price. And so the frackers pay more for it, but we need our sand. So we pay more, and then they pay more, and then we pay more. So that's how we got to 40 to $45 per ton for sand. Now, I know sand does not make up a high dollar amount in the cubic yard of concrete, but still, it's going up quite a bit. So it's going to be a factor. <clears throat> so if you're wondering if the price increases increase requests that you're getting from your contractors or your uh, concrete suppliers are legitimate, kind of looks like they are. And it depends on how much they're asking for, of course. But, you know, if they're asking for, you know, $3 a yard, 4 or $5 a yard more, it's probably legit. Depends on what you were paying in the past. And so I'm curious, so what are you going to do next? The, you know, the supply chain excellence starts with asking the right questions. And the right question here is, Am I paying the right price for concrete? Con so to, to first know how much you're paying for a cubic yard of concrete for both your flat work and your foundations. And then you need to feel comfortable that you're paying the right price. So how do you know? There has to be some kind of comparisons in order for you, you to feel comfortable that you're paying the right price. So I, I highly recommend you go to your concrete uh, guys they, they know a lot about the supply. They usually have their ear to the ground on what's happening on concrete supply. 
and they'll be a good source of information. They should not be your only source of information. So if you want to feel comfortable that you're paying the right price for a cubic yard of concrete, you, there's some sort of comparison needs to take place. And so I hope that you're doing that. <clears throat> and mix design. So the recipe that creates the concrete ready mix that you're delivering to your job site was created by someone. Someone put that recipe together. And those mix designs, I hope you're getting involved with. And it's possible that there is a mix design which costs less, but still achieves the same results that you desire for your projects. So get involved in the mix design and, and feel so to the point that you feel comfortable that you've got the right ingredients in that recipe. So here's a, here's a thought. If you buy concrete from a company that also manufactures cement, <clears throat> do you benefit from the lower cost cement that that concrete uh, batch plant is getting? Or are you paying for the same price for concrete as everybody else is? I'm curious about that. <clears throat> I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. And then the last question, which I encourage you to ask for on, on every trade category, is going to your subcontractors and your suppliers and asking, what is it we do that costs you money? And the answers to those questions are what drives the a continual improvement process of lowering each other's costs. Now, now my, I'm a big advocate of pulling cost out of the supply chain, not margins. Uh, sometimes margins are uh, uh, unfairly too high, but once that's in check, we want them to be solid. We want them to be good, uh, healthy businesses on a go forward basis, whether labor suppliers or material suppliers. And so taking, working together to take cost out of the supply chain is the answer to finding your best prices and your best production capacities. So what's your crystal ball say? Do you think that the price of concrete is gonna continue and it's gonna tick up even further? Do you think it's gonna hold steady where it is? Or do you think it's going to come down a little bit? I mean, there's lots of headlines right now about the uh, inflation, uh, a re recession approaching or in a recession, and even housing slowing down. And layoffs are starting to hit the, hit the headlines as well. So will that drive the behaviors and cause them to drop prices a little bit? I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know put by putting them in the comments section below. And we'll see you on the next video.